if you've ever lifted the cover on your sourdough starter and found mold, you know what a frustrating and almost shocking experience that can be. So in this video, I'm going to explain what can cause mold, the various types of mold, what is and isn't mold, and in the process, what you can do about it to prevent it from happening. Some of the causes may be really obvious to you and others may be pretty surprising. So be sure to listen to the whole video. I'm also leaving a link to a printable checklist in the description box that you can download and you can use that in your kitchen and the inside of your cupboard if you have a new starter and you can go through that and find out which of the causes may have likely caused the mold on your sourdough starter. Let's first talk about what sourdough is because that also helps us understand some of what I'm gonna say next. Sourdough is this mixture, if you will, um, of certain microbes. And some of them are lactobacillic bacteria, some are wild yeasts. If you have a mature, healthy, active starter, there's a really good balance of these beneficial microbes, the ones that we want, the ones that give the sourdough bread a nice, complex, slightly sour taste. And they typically, a healthy starter is typically able to outcrowd and outcompete any bad bacteria. Oftentimes, what that also means is that if you have a very young starter or you're just about in the process of making a sourdough starter from scratch, that is the most likely scenario when you're gonna find mold. What does mold look like? Oftentimes, it is little black specks on the side or on the surface of your sourdough starter. And if often it's a little bit fuzzy and, I mean, if you see it, you'll know that you have mold. Mold can also, or bad bacteria can also cause pink or orange streaks in your sourdough starter or on top of your sourdough starter, anything that looks green. So anything that just doesn't look quite right. And oftentimes, if you were to smell your sourdough starter, it probably wouldn't have a very pleasant smell. And then there's something that's called calm yeast. That's an overgrowth of a certain type of yeast. And it's more of a slimy white substance. You can scrape that off. It's harmless. It's not really helping your sourdough starter, but it's not going to kill you. Then often people say, oh my gosh, I have this layer of brown liquid on top of my sourdough starter, and that is called hooch. And typically that means that your sourdough starter is hungry. So all I do is I stir it back in, I add a little bit more flour, depending on you know what stage that is happening, and then I'm good to go. Some people recommend pouring the hooch off. It's really kind of up to you. I think that there's still something beneficial going on in this uh, liquid on top of it and I like to stir it back in. What are the main causes or the common causes for mold on your sourdough starter? One can be the ingredients that you're using. It can be the equipment that you're using. It can be the water and I want to kind of say that differently from the ingredients although it often is an ingredient improper storage and your environment. Contaminated ingredients, that means that maybe your flour is causing the mold and it can do that in two ways. It can either be contaminated with mold spores in and of itself. It is not very common in the US to get moldy flour, but that could, for example, happen if it's been stored in humid conditions whether that was before you bought it or after you bought it, or if there are any mold spores for some reason in the flour. So if you suspect that that could be the reason, the simple solution is to just try a different bag of flour or entirely new flour altogether. The other reason can be if you're using bleached flour. So if you think about what the bleaching does, the bleaching whitens the flour, but it also kills, bleach sanitizes, it kills. That can also inhibit the growth of the beneficial bacteria and the wild yeasts that we're trying to grow, which makes it a little bit harder to outcompete the bad bacteria. So in that case, the solution is to switch at least to unbleached flour. And I always prefer organic because even if it's conventional flour, it most often has been sprayed with some herbicide or pesticide. And all of these 
toxins are toxins intended to kill something and we don't want to kill all of the good things in our sourdough sort of we want to actually cultivate them the next thing could be your tools or your equipment that you're using um, it starts with the jar i don't recommend that you sanitize your jars or use disinfectants on them if you just put them in the dishwasher and run them on a hot cycle that will be enough in terms of cleaning them sometimes if you wash them by hand and you get some soap residue that can also cause mold so just put your jar in the um, dishwasher and you should be good to go in terms of equipment and then obviously if you use any spoons that are not clean the same goes for that as well let's talk about water water can also cause your salad or starter to get moldy if you're using chlorinated tap water chlorine again is a substance that's added to tap water to kill bacteria <laughs> and it can also kill the good bacteria that you're trying to cultivate in your salad or starter so at a minimum i recommend using bottled water or filtered water you can also if those are not available for any reason you can also use tap water and either let it stand at room temperature for 24 hours during which the chlorine will completely evaporate or you boil the water in an open container for 15 minutes and then the chlorine should also be evaporated improper storage can mean a few things um, a lot of people because sourdough likes a warm environment depending on who you ask i would say 70 to 75 degrees fahrenheit is optimal i will tell you that in our kitchen especially in the winter the thermostat is set to 68 and this kitchen doesn't have its own heat source so even in the uh, at night it gets down to the 50s and i have successfully made and maintained sourdough starters in a cold kitchen however if your sourdough starter gets too warm let's say above 140 degrees it can also kill certain yeasts in it they will die off and that can cause mold on your sourdough starter another obvious reason is yes you would like to keep your sourdough starter warm you don't really have a good spot in your house so a lot of people keep their sourdough starters in their ovens with the pilot light on or with the light on and that creates just enough warmth now if you're not the only one who's using the stove not everybody is instructed somebody may come in preheat the oven and i've heard tons of stories of people like oh my gosh my sourdough starter has been baked however I have a very simple method how to make a new starter so don't despair even if you've killed if you've cooked your sourdough starter you can easily make a new one for some reason the whole sourdough experience is still a little bit overwhelming or a little bit intimidating to you i have created for just that reason an online sourdough course that i call super simple sourdough because my signature sourdough method is pretty different from most of the methods out there and you can find the link right here or in the description box and i would love to see you in that online course with a lot of help and a lot of support and all these video modules that you can watch at your own pace and become really successful and confident with your sourdough starter another reason could be a too humid environment either because you live in a very humid area or i don't know i'm just making this up i don't think i've ever said this before let's say you're trying to keep your sourdough starter in your bathroom because it's warm in there and you know you create a lot of steam with a shower so that wouldn't necessarily be a good environment for your sourdough starter and the solution is just keep it dry find another warm spot for it or just be sure that if you leave it in the oven and i leave all sorts of things in my oven all the time including bread that i don't i don't want to have a bread box on my counter but i'm pretty much the only one who's using my oven but you could also put a little sticker on the oven knob and say oh sourdough starter is in there another thing that isn't talked about a whole lot but i feel is critical is if the sourdough starter or if you're trying to make a sourdough starter in an overly sanitized home that can also make it very difficult to capture the wild yeasts and the lactobacillic uh, bacteria that are in the air and by that i mean people who use bleach and sanitizers in their home you know clorox on the doorknobs and while that may sanitize your home and kill all the bad bacteria it also kills the good bacteria and 
when you're first making a sourdough starter, you are capturing wild yeasts from the air, not just the flour, but also from the air. And if they're non-existent, then you can't capture them. I personally think that you are perfectly fine just using hot water and soap for most cleaning jobs. And that also goes for your hands. I just read a book which is really interesting on sourdough. It's called Sourdough School, and I'll leave a link for that book down below. And in that book, the author talks about how when people sanitize their hands and touch the sourdough starter, there's a lot of um, good bacteria on your hands, healthy bacteria on your hands that could and should go into your sourdough starter. So if you're sanitizing too much, you could prevent the cultivation of your sourdough cultures. I do get a lot of questions about certain things that I will tell you will not kill your sourdough starter. And one is using metal utensils for your sourdough starter. There is this idea that the sourdough, because it is sour, the acidic acid or the acids in that could react with metal. I think that's mostly for aluminum, not stainless steel, because most bakeries use stainless steel bowls and vats for making their sourdough doughs. So, and especially if you're just stirring your sourdough starter quickly, briefly, and then leaving it again, that's not gonna cause your sourdough starter to get moldy. Now, here's another thing in your kitchen that you need to watch out for, and this is the only reason I ever had mold on my sourdough starter, and that is because as I told you, our kitchen is pretty cold. I sometimes keep my sourdough starter in a sunny windowsill because then it gets pretty warm. And we have a fruit bowl underneath it. And in that fruit bowl was a lemon from our garden. That's not a commercial variety. So they're more susceptible to mold. And there was a little bit of mold on the other side. And yes, spores can jump over from one source to another source and I did have mold on my sourdough starter. If you're somebody who likes to ferment sauerkraut and kefir and yogurt, I haven't really had a problem, but what I always do is I try to keep those different ferments in different places in my kitchen with something like four feet in between because I want to cultivate a certain type of um, microbes in my sourdough starter versus my sauerkraut and versus my dairy ferments. So most people will advise to keep your ferments separated. If you're somebody who does regular feedings and discards and you go, oh my gosh, I forgot to do XYZ discard feed my sourdough starter and that's called mild neglect, that will not kill your sourdough starters, especially if you have one that's a little bit more mature. They tend to be pretty robust, and I feel like at this point I can do a lot of things with my sourdough starter, and it's not gonna kill it. Um, it's it's really robust. So that will mild neglect, mild, it's a hard one for me, mild neglect will not kill your sourdough starter. Also, incorrect feedings, if you're accidentally feeding it too much flour or not enough flour or likewise too much water or not enough water, that's also very unlikely gonna hurt your sourdough starter. And if that happens, either your sourdough starter gets a little bit too stiff and that doesn't really do anything, or it gets too runny and you'll notice that and it will start bubbling over and look very foamy. And then you just add a little bit more flour. And freezing is not gonna kill your sourdough starter. However, the longer you keep your sourdough starter in the freezer, we're talking long-term weeks and months, the more inactive it becomes and then it can be harder to reactivate it. So if you're thinking about long-term storage for your sourdough starter, you can either check out my super simple maintenance method in which you can keep it in your refrigerator for easily six months or think about dehydrating a sourdough starter and then you can travel with it or you can send it in the mail and you, a lot of people just love to have a little bit of dehydrated sourdough starter as a backup just in case something happens to their regular normal sourdough starter. And so really it's, it's pretty simple. How do you prevent mold in first place? Start with clean utensils, not sanitized, um, live in a healthy home. <laughs> and keep it at 70 to 75 degrees Celsius. Don't worry if it's 69. Again, that's not gonna kill your sourdough starter. There's just an optimal range. And if you're wondering about the flowers, yes, you can use unbleached organic all-purpose flour. 
If you have a very robust one, you can probably even feed it bleached and conventional flour. However, starting out, if you wanna get things going a little bit quicker, the more whole grain flour you add to your sourdough starter, the faster it will grow. And if you use rye flour, that will particularly be like your sourdough on steroids because there's something about rye and sourdough that is just meant to be together and the rye will really jumpstart your sourdough starter. If you have more questions about your sourdough that I haven't answered, I have an entire playlist here with how-tos and recipes. I invite you to check that out and I'll see you over in those videos.